Welcome to the Love Them Knives channel. And what do we got? What do we have? We have the Night Horse. It's a Dirk Pinkerton design and it's a big knife. And I saw this Atlanta Blade Show 2022. I was talking to my buddy David Sun. His last name is Sun, S U N. I knew him from Kaiser. He's worked for several different um, knife companies, but he's with Beyond EDC. Beyond EDC. And it's an exclusive four and a half inch blade, 14C28N, except for the titanium one. And the titanium one is S35VN. And you can see that the logo here is asymmetrical. Okay, so you've got Beyond EDC, which is kind of the mother corporate name in a way, but it's also the name of their budget line of knives. And this is at $29.99. What do you do at 14C28N? How can you do that? Okay, how can you retail it for $29.99? I just jumped on it. I go, these have got to sell out like instantly. But no, I mean... What's this two weeks later and they're still sitting there for sale? So I don't know how many uh, Smoky Mountain ordered, but I'm surprised they're still in stock. Um, but you know, $29, that's what you pay for a Ganzo. How come the Ganzo name's not on this? I mean, that's amazing. Which one is this, by the way? This is the FH922. Oh yeah, baby. It's one of my favorite Ganzos, but I mean this. This is in the same price range. Um, and this is $149, which ain't a lot of money for titanium and S35BN. Ambidextrous thumb studs. It's a frame lock. It's locked up big time. Got a big old backspacer, titanium pocket clip. Uh, no left hand there. And it doesn't look like it is here either. No. Deep carry though, pocket clip, etc., and big old long backspacer, etc. Now, this is really fascinating that they have it coming out in both the G10 and uh, where's this? And the titanium at the same time. Both are exclusives. So you can't get this night horse anywhere else but Smoky Mountain. Okay, Dirk Pinkerton, five and a half inches close. So where's my tape measure? Are you up to it, buddy? Because this is going to take a while. Woo! Okay, is that four and a half? That's 4.35, 4.4 there. But down here is almost 4.75 back to the bolster. So, I mean, you make the call. I'm going to call it four and a half. Easy. Ten inches overall length. Okay, and so what is 10 inches overall? What's that? 23, 25.2 centimeters. And you're talking about 115 millimeter blade length. And just to complete our little minor analysis here, almost six tenths of an inch, 0.58 at 14.7 millimeters. And blade stock, and we'll check the other one to see. Three millimeter blade stock, 0.11. I'm surprised the blade stock's not thicker than that, considering 0.13, 3.4 meter blade stock on this, 3.5. Okay, so that's three, and that's 3.5. Hold on, let me look at this. 13.1, 1. 0.51. So this is thinner, okay? And that is crazy. Let me beat the blades together. Okay, 0.58, but this is three millimeter, right? Yeah, hmm, okay. So this is a half a millimeter thinner blade stock. Let's put them together. Well, yeah, you can tell. Okay, okay. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Same size though. Big dogs, aren't they? Now, of course, this one comes in a pretty, you know, just basic box here. And uh, 
you can get it in tan, green, black, you know, whatever. And let's open it up. If we can, it's got a little bag, okay? Like here. No writing on it. And then congratulations and etc. Okay. Uh, and a little plastic inside the drawstring bag. Now let's see what this one looks like. And let's fold this up before we cut body parts off. Uh, okay. Yes, we have a zipper pouch and the plastic. Or, or no, this is the microfiber cloth. There's the plastic. There's the paperwork. Okay, so we get microfiber cloth. Um... Okay, I was just looking around. Okay, so you get this little pouch thing, but you don't have little individual, I mean, pockets and stuff. Okay, so that's what you get there. Of course, this is pretty inexpensive on its own being, you know, a buck 49. And this, 29 bucks. I mean, 149 and 29. I thought that was pretty incredible. Now, here's titanium. S35, do I trust it? No, I don't. And ambidextrous thumb studs. We're going to, yeah. Uh, if I stay up towards the front, maybe it won't drop on me. But there's no there's no flipper tab to bump your thumb and, and drop. And then you got these ambidextrous thumb studs. Whew, that drops. It's centered. No blade play. Yeah, no problems with this one. Let's take a look at the $29 shooter. Okay, no blade player lock rock. There's your lock up. It's about, well, crap. I mean, that's got to be 35% or so. It's got some, you know, traction here because of this milling. On this G10, I mean, nothing to brag about with the hardware, but I, it'd be about what you'd expect, even on a $65 or $70 knife, right? And then you have these, which I don't know if these will unscrew with a blade or not. So, um, of course, I'd want to keep them there, because how else are you going to open this dog if you don't have these? You've got no flipper tab, can't front flip, no cutaways, no fuller. So you got this, you got this. But it'll kick right open and as amazing as it is being a 10 inch knife, that's pretty crazy. Let's throw them on the scale and just see what they weigh. I mean, they're not gonna be a lightweight whatever. And let's get it in the light where we can see the scales. Okay, 156 grams. Let's try this one. 143 grams. Actually lighter. Okay, now. 156 grams. And one more. 5.51 ounces. It's not six. And that's five right on the nut. But uh, so, okay. I mean, that's not terribly heavy for a 10-inch knife. Holy crap. Oh, let me let me grab a piece of paper real quick. Oh, you know what? This one actually has been used because I was out. Uh, I had a bunch of cardboard boxes out in the garage, and I decided I'm finally going to go and uh, cut them up. Put them in the trash, fold them up. So, no, this one has uh, been used pretty hard for about a half an hour cutting cardboard. Let me see this one. Okay. Yeah, I can tell there's a difference in the edge. I didn't, uh, yeah, maybe I need to strop that other one up. But, yeah, they, I mean, you know, I'm surprised this one still has... At a 14C with the kind of hard use I was giving it because I was really hossing down on some cardboard, but it's, it seems all right. And what a drop, right? Easy to flick out. Um, you got jimping that's going from here all the way down here. 
And you know what? Those liners don't look too rugged. I mean, they they look pretty smoothed out. That's what I mean by, you know. Yeah, I mean, they look pretty nicely finished considering it's $29 knife. And then looks like it's skeletonized inside. And then you got jimping up here so you could you could run up here. You got a little cutaway there. So at least if you're going to get it on the strop or put it on the full-on sharpener. And you should be able to do that okay. So yeah, I don't see any real big issues with that. Um, let's take a look at this one a little closer. Okay, so yeah, we're doing the same thing with the jumping here, only it's not on G10. Um, and let me pull my... Okay, yeah, I'm feeling the hardware come through. Nothing here, nothing there. Okay, so this is all titanium but yeah i can feel and there's probably a steel pass through there for them to wind up on right that and then the hardware of course is steel but that is i like it um the ergos are great they're no problem at all you got all the room in the world on that and reverse grip Whew. Plenty of room. I mean, lots of room. Um, I don't know. Maybe even, you know, for striking or hammering at something, you could do that. But just drops. Uh, for no more than it costs. I mean, any more titanium and a crucible, you know, super steel. Um, you know, for 150 seems like a bargain these days, doesn't it? And here's your design flow. Looks good. Blade to handle length is plenty good right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's centered up. It's solid. It feels good. What do you think? I like it. And then, of course, this is this is meaningful here this gives you grip um but yeah i mean it's it's thick enough here it it's you know good for purchase on there um but wow i'm just i'm just surprised that they weren't a general you know that they were all smoky mountain knife work exclusive but yeah uh fascinating and big and ballsy to do something like that isn't it in the middle of the like you know here you go shield and knives right okay this is the calibri this is what's coming out these days so or even you know just like your standard like uh tucson knife that's a full size knife but still, whew, that's gutsy. That's gutsy call to get out there and do that. Wow. Um, and even, you know, pull another Dirk Pinkerton design, right? The Escort, which is almost eight inches overall length. That's, that's insane. That's 3.3 something inch blade there. Whew, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I was trying to figure out which one do I want to take apart. I think I'm more curious actually about this one. First of all, am I going to have hardware issues? Because it's a $29 knife, you know? And I'm more confident in the titanium one than I am in the fact that this might be okay. And I'm going to see... Yeah, I'm not going to push that. That stopped, but it didn't give. Okay. Okay. I think most cases, if you have to guess, you probably ought to guess the backside. And it does look like a flat spot on the pivot, which, you know, I mean, it shouldn't be a surprise. But on the other hand, I'm just looking at the price of this. I mean, try doing the math in your head. How do you how do you sell it at a profit for twenty nine? Does that 
I don't know. It's just confusing to me. I mean, you got all these other knives out there going, I mean, that are in the budget category that are now kicking $65, $75 easy. So maybe I'll find a reason why this is so inexpensive. Um, let's get this one. But the hardware, you know. And I'm just Joe Schmo. I mean, nobody at Smoky Mountain knows who the hell I am. That's for sure. Okay. Ooh, baby. Maybe you want to hold on, don't you? Okay. We'll get you. We'll get you busted off. Okay. So let's take a look at these two. I think these screws are the same length. Yeah, they are. Okay. Well, they're not going through anything like a standoff or anything. Okay, pull this. Here's this. And is that the same as the other body screws? Yeah. It's, it probably saves money to try and keep your hardware as uniform as possible. And let's take a look. G10. Got a little juice in there. Um, okay, back side. This is a lock bar side. Here's this, and that comes, just lifts off. And there's a ceramic detent ball. That's an insult to injury, isn't it? I mean, 29 bucks, and I'm getting ceramic. Please don't let there be ceramic. Oh, there are ceramic bearings on here. Oh, my God. All you people charging 65, please explain yourself. Okay, nah, just, I don't know. That's, it's insane. I just think it's hilarious actually um internal so here um you know i'm looking at it it let me look around the camera now the plunge looks symmetrical the grind looks fine um you know where am i seeing shortcuts and that kind of thing There's ceramic and i like them like that the ceramic ones um like open you know not caged you know but here like this captured uh and there's your and that just floats right on through no problem nice little flat spot goes across and then now um if you want to fault them fault them on the fact that see i did try the front because it had an entry i think nh like night horse engraved on this pivot would have been smart and i'm looking around to see oh yeah i got this you know like this the kubi cheetah just do that on the front right do that on the front and don't make it an entry point because somebody might get their torques in there and just torture themselves and this is not going to turn you know what i'm saying so you got to kind of feel your way when you got it on both sides because you don't need it on both sides because you've got that that flight captured pivot, you know. But you do need it on that. So we're all good. And so we've got skeletonized liner. We got a nice long old backspacer on here. Um, I didn't have any issues with the hardware coming off. And a nice deep carry pocket clip. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but pretty similar to knives that cost double or more the price. So, no problems, you know, with the hardware. Thank goodness. Um, and it's centered and it's back. And, I, you know, I noticed this little area here where it kind of presents a stub right there. So if you hike up on it close enough, you can do a little bit of fidget factor just like that. You can feel it. You know what I'm saying? I just get a little antsy sometimes because if I don't have a flipper tab there necessarily, I worry about the impact hitting, uh, hitting the blade with my finger. Not good. But okay. And Night Horse Titanium. Can we uh, feel our way around with that? Yes, we can. And that, nice. Yeah, I mean, good, easy drop, uh, quick over the detent ball. 
and it's uh it's good so fidget factor big size if you like a big knife I think you're in good shape here. You like Dirk Pinkerton designs, and this seems a bit out of his wheelhouse. Then again, what is his wheelhouse? Um, I thought I had him figured out, but guess not. He took a left turn on me, and we got the night horse. Take care, my friends. Thank you so much. Sub to my channel if you would, and stay sharp.